Thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. I'm very excited to introduce you to a new phone made by Google. We call it Pixel. Ever since the Pixel was first released, there was always a hit and a miss. The first gen was an interesting take on product design, but sported a high price compared to the Nexus that we were all used to before it. The Pixel 2 had the best camera we had ever seen in a phone, but was plagued with display issues and again, that price. And that kind of continues through each of the Pixel phones. There are parts of it that are the best phone you've ever used, but then there's that one glaring reason why the vast majority of people wouldn't or shouldn't buy it. The Pixel 6 though is the first time I think Google finally got the message. It seems like the first time they took a step back and made meaningful decisions at every layer of the phone from hardware, software, and even processing. This is undeniably a Google phone. And honestly, I think it's the first time you can really say that. And their Hail Mary, well, it just may have paid off. What is Google? Well, on the face of it, it's pretty obvious. It's a search engine. It's what most of us use to actually access the internet and get information. But what does that really mean? What it really means is Google knows almost everything about you because they are the gateway to the internet. Everything you search for, everything you watch, listen to, even think Google knows, or at the very least, they want to know. Whether or not that is a good thing, well, that's a completely different conversation. But with that information, Google is trying to create a world where the computer in your pocket, in your ears, in your home, the computer everywhere can get you what you want and what you need easier and easier. Ambient computing is Google's goal, they've said as much. And this means you can get what you need when you want it and also in as little steps as possible and Google is wanting to be the gateway to do that. And so far, they are probably farthest on the path to getting us to that world. I have a box literally full of devices from Google that can answer really any question I have ambiently. But the one place that Google really needs to infiltrate to really make this vision a success is the smartphone. It's the one place that everyone really uses all the time that they don't necessarily use Google for. Now, sure, Android obviously is made by Google and it's running on most of the phones in this world. It's the most popular operating system. And Android has Google Assistant built in. So on the whole, people are obviously using Google services, but OEMs always try to meddle with what Android does. They have different skins, they have different assistants. There's a lot of things that you can do with Android that leads a lot of people to just not use it the way Google wants. The system itself is Android, but the layer on top is not Google. And not to mention iOS, that is as locked down as can be when it comes to Google services. You have to actively choose to use something like Google Assistant, and most people just aren't doing that. So from an ambient computing perspective, that gets cut off at the phone a lot of the time. So I think Google really needed to create something that would be compelling. It would still have Android like a lot of Android users would want, but it would be compelling enough that you would choose the Google version. And maybe even for those using the iPhone, a compelling reason to switch to what Google has to offer. And that's what the Pixel 6 is. There's a lot to offer, but more importantly, it's almost the gateway drug into the Google ecosystem. This chip is arguably the most important thing Google has done in years, especially for hardware. Something interesting to consider is that everything Google has done with hardware up until now has been done with other people's hardware. Of course, this is kind of a standard in the industry, but considering they have done so much with their processing, with their software, it has worked out rather well. And it clearly worked. All the Pixel devices we got before were great devices in their own right, but it always felt there was one area that was lacking and it felt like Google had to make a sacrifice. And I think that's where Tensor really comes in. Interestingly, Google didn't really talk about Tensor being this performance powerhouse that's gonna beat every other chip out there. Instead, they focused on what I think Google thinks is the most important parts of a Pixel phone, that ambient computing, that AI, all of that is 
so important to the Pixel device, and that's what Tensor is really targeted for. And I think that really does hold true. All the benchmarks haven't really, you know, blown anyone away. It's a very well-performing chip, especially when you use it, but it's not something that's gonna blow your socks off. But in use, it performs exactly the way you would hope. And from Google's perspective, it actually enables a lot of the things that they think are important. So things like the voice dictation, which is extremely fast, and accurate, the camera system, which we will get to, the places that make your phone feel less like a piece of tech and more like a tool that lets you get to your end goal and are more of an extension of you. Tensor excels in those areas. You then take that processor and put it into a rather unique chassis. And I think you start to see what Google is doing here. This is the Google experience and it's one that will evolve, change and be unique because Google themselves is unique. You are unique. The Pixel 6 is meant to be an expression of you. It's not a new smartphone, but rather what will get you to your goals. Real quick, before we continue, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, Best Buy. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Best Buy. It's one of the best places to buy the tech that you are wanting to get. But they also offer some of the best deals that you can find. So in their top deals section, every single week, you get refreshed deals on some of the hottest tech. So for instance, Apple products like the iPhone or the Apple Watch, TVs, computers, gaming devices, really anything you can think of, Best Buy constantly has excellent savings on those products. Just looking at it right now, you can save up to $230 on some Samsung tablets, or maybe you're looking at picking up one of these new Pixel 6s or a new phone, and you want some headphones for that. They have tons of deals. I mean, these are just the ones that are currently available, but they refresh constantly. So for any of these deals and many, many others, be sure to check out Best Buy. I'll leave links down below in the description. It's the holidays coming up, so don't wanna miss out on these great deals, and check out what they've got. There's no doubt the Pixel's camera has always been one of the top features of this phone. Ever since the Pixel 2 was released with that excellent camera, I mean, since then, every single phone to be released is compared to the Pixel. And even though the hardware has stayed largely the same, the software was just that good. And so now that the Pixel 6 Pro has a truly upgraded hardware set for the camera, that would lead you to believe that the Pixel 6 Pro is now going to retake the mantle as best camera on a phone. Well, technically, I'm not exactly sure that's true. This camera performs extremely well. The hardware that is built in is top notch, some of the best I've seen, but the software, the processing, is doing some weird things, to my eye at least but I'm not exactly sure that's an accident. These photos kind of remind me of the early days of HDR, not HDR on phones, but HDR with typical cameras. You'd have to take multiple bracketed photos, then bring them into a special software or Photoshop and manually align them and adjust all the exposure. It was a process, but HDR back in those days looked well, it looked downright weird. Very contrasty, very vibrant. There was a way to do it tastefully, but a lot of the times it just, it just didn't work. But there was a time and place where showing someone a photo like this would yield a really positive response. It was just something that was so different and never really done before that you would look at this photo and think, that's cool, that's new, I like it. It was almost a surreal experience to see an image of something that you recognize, but in such an interesting way. Now, the Pixel does not do this HDR effect, don't get me wrong, but it almost has a similar effect when someone looks at the photo. The Pixel photos oftentimes look kind of fake to my eye. The HDR is really working overtime, bringing up those shadows and bringing down those highlights so nothing is really ever quite natural. The colors are often a lot cooler and not exactly true to life and the sharpness, especially on this phone, is cranked up to 11. But when you just take a step back and look at the photo, I mean, it does stand out. And if you don't have like a trained eye, you likely will love it because it pops. It stands out differently than a lot of other phones have in the past. Going back to what Google is trying to give you here, this is almost a representation of what the time is like rather than an exact depiction. This is almost an emotional photo rather than one that is exactly perfect. 
So I, I'm a photographer. I take pictures all the time with many different types of cameras. So when I look at a photo, I really look for specific things that matter to me because of my experience. Is the detail natural and like organic? Are the colors balanced? Is the range from light to dark wide enough, but also keeping the darks dark and the lights light? There are a ton of different photography specific things that I look for because it's what matters to me when I look at the technical details. But for someone who doesn't really care about photography, or at least doesn't care about the specifics, they just want a really great photo, that's where the pixel really starts to deliver. And this is very common in photography. I've edited countless photos to add my own effects with grain, interesting colors, different dynamic ranges. I mean, these photos are not a representation of what it actually looked like when I took it, but rather what I'm trying to express through the photos. And I think the pixel is doing very much a same thing. This is not necessarily the photographer's phone camera, but rather a camera that makes everyone feel like they can be a photographer. And that's probably a bigger deal than what technically takes a better photo. If Google is successful in making you like the Pixel photos better, well, that's one step closer to you buying this phone and entering the Google ecosystem. Material U is the best attempt yet I've seen at creating customization, but the ease of use for the general consumer. You don't have to go in and download icon packs or themes. It's all built into the system. Just changing your wallpaper will change how the system looks. And along with all the very interesting looking widgets, it makes the phone feel like it has much more of a personality. And that was another thing that the Pixel has always done well, but had never really gotten its footing. The Google version of Android was always, I thought, the best and the most refined and the most polished, but it never really changed much. The Google version of Android on the Pixel very much felt like the base layer that I would want to go get a different OEM so I can get their features on top of what was already great. Android 12 and Material U feels like the completed package. This is what Google really wanted their Android version to be like. And for the user, anything that makes you feel a little bit more emotionally connected, I think will help. It's gonna make you want to use your phone more and again, lead you into that Google ecosystem. This is a great first step for Google. Granted, this is the sixth generation of the Pixel, so it's not like they're exactly new to this, but this time it feels different. It feels almost like they really tried this time, like they had a plan going in. At the same time though, this does still feel almost like a first iteration, but in a good way. It feels like they were thinking to themselves, okay, we have this phone now and now we can iterate on it. Let's get this out, see how people like it, and we can make it even better as time goes on. But that is actually what the issue is with the Pixel 6 as it stands right now. It lacks that refinement that you would get after iteration upon iteration. Because in the past, Google always seemed to pick a new path and just kind of try to see what worked. They never really got to the point where they felt like they had a polished product. But now that they seem invested, I think that's going to change. They have a unique design language. They have a bespoke processor and software that fits it with Material U. It has all the pieces in place, so now Google can focus on making this better rather than figuring out what this is. And I think that will lead to the accomplishment of what Google is trying to do. They wanna be everywhere in your life. And now that they have a phone that is a competitive price point and has features that appeal to real people, it's really up to them to actually pull it off.